this course is presented to you free of charge by TTJ Tech Services of www.ttjtech.biz and by Stir It Up of www.stirritup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with a U, not an I. So that's S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P dot com. TTJ Tech Services and Stir It Up are pleased to offer this course to you to the glory of God and to the benefit of all those who listen. Welcome to More with the Mac 2024. I think this is session number three. I got my buddy from ttjtech.net. Uh-oh, I'm getting better at that. You're in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not his, though. That's the only trouble. Oh, business. goodness. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that dot biz. It's always going to be... .net had a little <laughs> ring to it, so... <laughs> but yeah, ttjtech.biz. You can check yep. check out his podcast on TTJ Talk on any of your favorite uh, podcast platforms. But today, we're going to walk through... The Finder, some other apps, and basically teach you predictable patterns. Because as you will learn in the iPad class that's coming up, uh, what's that date again, Matt? Well, we'll be resuming uh, actually next week with our introductory session. So um, actually next Monday is the uh, 20, uh, 25th, I believe. Or, or the 26th, 26th it is. 26th. Yep, yes, 26th. February 26th is our next iPad uh, class. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it's not too late to sign up. Just no. um, is is there a link on your website, or do they have to email, or how do they get that if they don't have uh, it yet? The easiest way, if they don't have it, is just send an email to info at ttjtech.biz, and uh, we'll get you the registration link. All right. There you have it. So, um, as you will learn in the iPad class, and if you were in our voiceover in and out class back in the fall of any of the past five years, you know that we teach you predictable patterns, basically telling you that Apple has come up with a system that works with voiceover and screen reader software that most of their apps, if it's made by them anyway, is always going to have the same pattern. So what you can do in mail, you can do in messages. What you can do in messages, you can do in text edit. What you can do in text edit, you can do in pages, Safari, so on and so forth. So um, Matt's going to talk about what we can do and then we're going to do a couple demos here. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, thanks to all of you for joining More with the Mac. We're so glad to have you here. And, uh, yeah, these predictable patterns, as Trainer Cliff has said, really will make the yes, difference God. and will make it possible for you to navigate just about any app or website that you want to. And I like to say it this way, and we say it in every voiceover class, in every iPad class, and in most other areas of life, I think it applies as well which is that we need to learn the fundamentals. And I, I heard an example a long time ago, and I've used it ever since I heard it, um, which is that they always ask the question, what is it that you are watching when you watch the Super Bowl? Of course, we just had the Super Bowl, had a great time, great food and all that, and family and friends. And, you know, we really enjoyed And I'm not even a football person. Um, I'm not even a sports person. But I enjoyed the Super Bowl, and I had no desire to change the channel because – it was a nail biter. I mean, it really was right up to the end. What was it in the last? I forget now, Cliff. Eight seconds or something like that. Under it actually, it it actually went into overtime. Actually, it, did. it and, went into overtime, and it was in the last few seconds of the overtime that they, I think, that they they finally won. You know, the the uh, right. Kansas City Chiefs. And what I'm getting at here is that what makes those games so good is that both teams are so good at what they do. They've worked so hard to master the fundamentals that they can do all of these things. So when you watch the Super Bowl, or if you're not a football fan, replace that with anything else that you like. But you are watching the masters of the fundamentals. And the same is true with learning these skills in navigating with voiceover on whether it be iOS or Mac, is that if you learn the fundamentals, you can do just about anything you want. Now, certainly there are more advanced ways to do it that will save you time. And that's Trainer Cliff's area of expertise. He's going to come in and he'll show you commanders and he'll show you how to you know, use some of the quick shortcuts that will make it so much faster. But you don't have to if you're just getting started. You can do it by just knowing 
a few basic voiceover commands. And if you have a trackpad, you can even use many familiar gestures. Today, we're going to focus on the commands. But we're going to also focus on how the screen is laid out and how it's set up. And it is very important to understand that when we use voiceover, it's quite different than a lot of other screen readers because what you get, especially on iPhone and iPad, is you get a complete perception of what your sighted family members, friends, and coworkers are using. In other words, if somebody says to you, that icon is at the upper right corner of the screen, particularly true on touchscreen devices, you can reach up and you can touch the upper right corner of the screen. But even on a Mac, where you're not interacting directly with the screen, but rather you are using a, a you know an input device and you're then interacting uh, with an app that's within a window, you still can get an idea of what your sighted counterparts are experiencing because when you navigate, you navigate with something called the voiceover cursor. And this is very different. A lot of Windows screen readers only will allow you to use whatever is available through Windows keys unless you learn a, you know, a complicated set of specific commands for a specific screen reader. And I won't, you know, disparage anybody. It's not about that. It's, you know, they do things the way they do them. And we won't mention any screen reader names, but, you know, they, they have special keys and sometimes special keys for each app. And then only with those special keys can you access things like toolbars or, you know, uh, sidebars or things of that nature. But with Mac OS, everything you do is done by moving the voiceover cursor around the screen. So if you're familiar with the iPhone or the iPad, it's the same concept. You're moving the voiceover cursor. If you have some sight or anybody there that's sighted with you, you will uh, be able to know and they'll tell you that there is a rectangle that sort of highlights whatever has the focus. As you move the voiceover cursor, they're going to see that voiceover cursor. It looks like a rectangle and it's going to be right around whatever element of the screen currently has the focus, whatever is selected, in other words. And of course, we, we probably already know, uh, but just to, uh, to, to remind you again, that basic navigation with voiceover is from left to right. And you do this navigation with the voiceover keys and the arrow keys. What are your voiceover keys? Remember, control and option. Or if you must, you can use the caps lock. <laughs> A lot of people like that caps lock because it comes from, you know, the, it, it, it's familiar to them from Windows. But Cliff and I both prefer the control and option. Uh, we think that that uh, just, you know, is a sort of distinguishing, differentiating factor. So we later will teach you ways that you can do this with one hand and quick nav and all that stuff. But we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, right? So this is control and option held down while you press other keys. Those control and option, that's called the voiceover keys or the VO keys. And so if you hear somebody say, press VO right arrow, that means press control option right arrow. And that's how you move. You move to the next item on the screen with VO right arrow, control option right arrow. You move back to the previous item on the screen by pressing VO left arrow, or in other words, control option left arrow. And then to select an item, to actually open an app or to click a button or to bring up a, a pop-up menu, whatever it is that you want to select on the screen, whatever element has the focus can be selected with the O space bar. In other words, pressing control and option while you pr also press then the space bar and then let them all go. And so the O space is your activate command. It's the equivalent of double tapping on an iPhone or an iPad or a, a Macintosh trackpad, which we'll deal with later. Okay. But this is VO space. That's how you open something. So again, VO left and VO right to move between items and then VO space to open something. There is a, another command that uses VO command space. So you remember your keyboard layout there on the bottom row? You may or may not have a, a globe key or a function key at the bottom left, depending on which keyboard you have. But then you've got control, option, command, spacebar. And then going to the right, you got command, option, and maybe control if you have the uh, extended keyboard. Otherwise, no. But again, you can add that command key. So all three of the keys, control, option, command with the spacebar. And that is what we commonly refer to as your long press 
gesture in iOS. In other words, it's the context gesture. It's like a what we might say in the Windows world, a right click. And sometimes even Mac users use that term because it, it brings up a context menu of items. It's like click and hold or tap and hold in iOS, right? Control option, command space bar gives you the context menu. And we're going to demonstrate all of this in a couple minutes, but I want to talk about one other concept before we do. So let's before let's just review what we've done so far. Again, we can move between items on the screen with control option left arrow and control option right arrow. And when you get to the end of the uh, the row or or column or you know whatever, it's going to automatically wrap to the next or previous one. And you say, well, what about up and down? What about vo up and vo down? That's later. That's that actually controls something called the. Uh, the rotor in and we're going to you know we're going to get to ways to do that and, and how to deal with that at a later time that's not for right now just vo left and vo right for this moment we're starting out very simple okay and vo space to activate or to open something and or to click on something and then vo command space if you want a context click to get the contextual menus now before we do a demonstration I want to talk about one other thing that I really don't think we can be an effective Mac user without doing, and that is interacting. Now, here's where things start to get a little bit different from what we experience on the iPhone and the iPad by default, because as I mentioned to you, when you are navigating a Mac, because you're not touching the screen of it, you are interacting with a sort of in-between device that affects the app. And so what happens is that when you navigate on the screen, you're navigating kind of at a top level. And if you want to find out what's in anything that you run across on the screen, you have to interact with it. Now, don't worry if that sounds like it's overwhelming right now over your head. We're going to explain all of it. And I'm going to give you an analogy that I, I truly believe God gave this to me, and I, I like it a lot, and I believe it'll bless you, and I believe it'll totally clarify why we interact and when and, and what it means. So I like to use the example of going into a hotel. All right, let's, let's picture that we're in a city or a town, and we've got lots and lots of buildings as we're walking outside through the town or the city. We walk by the airport that we just left. We walk by a couple of restaurants, some office buildings. There's the hotel. Here it is. Here's the hotel we're staying at. Now, if we don't stop at that hotel and go inside, if we just keep walking, we're going to go right past the hotel. We know it's there. We can see the sign if we can see or somebody tells us or our phones tell us, but we don't know what's in that hotel unless we open the door and go inside. So now we open the door. We go through. Whoops, got our suitcase caught in the revolving door. Okay, we're through now. Now we finally get in. We're in the hotel. We're at the lobby. There are all kinds of places now, and we, we go to the, the front desk, and we check in, and they say, well, your room is, is 423. It's on the fourth floor. So we're going to take the elevator up to the fourth floor. Now, we get out on the fourth floor, and we, we come to a long corridor or a long hallway with rooms on either side. We need the odd numbers because we're 423. So as we walk down this hallway now, we're going to see room 403, 405, 407. 409, 411, all the way up, 421, there's 423. Now, again, if we just keep walking, we know that 423 is there. We've experienced the fact that we're passing by 423, but we don't know what's inside it. In order to find out what's inside it and use it, we're going to have to unlock the door and go in the room. And once we go in, we're deeper into this hotel now. We're a couple of layers in. And now we see that there's a bed and there's a coffee maker and a TV and a bathroom and a, you know, chairs and everything else that they might have in the room because we've gone deeper into that building, layer by layer, deeper in our in the hotel room. Now, if we want to go out of that hotel room, we're back in the hallway, we can go back down to the lobby, and there may be other places we want to go. There might be a restaurant there on site, there might be a swimming pool, but we have to go in each of those places. And as we do, we're going further and further into the, the hotel building, layer by layer, to get what we want. This is, I think, a, a beautiful analogy, praise God, for what we do on the Mac when we interact. Because as we're going to demonstrate here for you in a couple of minutes, many apps and many windows that you'll go into will have 
a lot of different areas that you'll pass by as you use your VO left and VO right arrow. You might first run across a toolbar. But what does that toolbar have in it? And if you just keep going VO right, you're going to pass right by the toolbar. You're going to hear voiceover announce that there's a toolbar. And it might even tell you there's eight items on the toolbar. But you're not going to hear what those items are unless you first interact with that toolbar. Now you're going to see that it has a new button so you can create a new document or open a new window or whatever the app might require. And maybe it has uh, an open button and maybe it has other other buttons that are relevant to the app that you're in. And now if we want to go beyond and stop seeing the toolbar and just see the rest of the app, we have to stop interacting with the toolbar. But now we're going to move to other things that we may need to interact with, like a sidebar or a, a, a content area or a scroll area. And so any one of these things that we need to work with, we have to interact with it. And if we want to stop working with it and see the rest of the app, we have to stop interacting with it. Now, I will point out that there is a feature that was introduced in iOS in the relatively recent past. I don't remember if it was version 16 or 15 or whatever. After a while, they all kind of blur together. But uh, there was a, an option called navigation style that was introduced for voiceover users. And by default, it's flat meaning literally you just touch something and that's what it is. But you can change it to grouped. And if you change it to group navigation, it actually kind of mimics this Mac experience. Like when you run across a, you know, a, a, a toolbar or some sidebar in, in iOS or something, you're going you're gonna to have to interact with it with a, a gesture uh, and instead of just automatically um, seeing it. Now, I, I don't do this. I leave my iOS and iPad OS's device uh, iPadOS devices on flat, I don't group them. I, I like it the way it's always been. And I am convinced that most iPhone and iPad users would prefer the flat navigation style. I can't think of any situation in which I would really want the group style. Maybe for you, maybe if you're more comfortable with the Mac, or maybe some people like I could see if there's a lot of stuff in one area of the screen and they'd rather avoid it. And then they, you know, so there might, you could try it if you find it difficult to navigate the iPhone or the iPad. But for me, it's going to be flat on the iPhone and iPad, which is the way that it's always been. But on the Mac, we really don't have a choice. Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Cliff, you're more the Mac user than I, but they haven't introduced a choice for that on the Mac, right? No, not that I know of, right, as, okay. as of yet. And I mean, okay. I use the Mac pretty much every day, so. Right, you would see it if it were there. So I, so we're going to say there's not a choice at this point. You have to do it this grouped way, and you have to interact, which we're going to demonstrate for you. But the command to interact so that you can learn this is VO, shift, down arrow. In other words, control, option, shift, down arrow to start interacting. And when you're done interacting... You stop with control option, shift, up, arrow. Okay. And yes, yes, for those of you who don't want to use a bunch of fingers, you can use the caps lock key, assuming yes. that it's set in your VO settings, which I go over later in this session. Correct. And of course, he's going to teach quick nav, and there's lots of other ways too, you know, and, and trackpad we'll cover. But for right now, VO shift down arrow to start interacting, VO shift up arrow to stop. Now, before we do the demo, I'm going to answer this question that a lot of people are ha have asked me over the years because maybe, you know, you're a little further along and you know about this, but you still aren't comfortable with when do I interact and how do I know? So I want to give you some keywords to look for that you can absolutely um, use these keywords to help you. And I also want to to remind you about your voiceover hints. We always say at, at TTJ and, and at Stir It Up, I'm pretty sure all of us on the team, we always say, leave your hints enabled. Don't disable them. If you don't want to hear them right now, just move on to the next thing. It will interrupt the hint or press the control key. If you need a moment of silence just to think and you don't want to hear that, just press control. It'll, it'll stop. Okay. But leave the hints on. Don't actually go in and disable them because... What you'll be doing is potentially selling yourself short by not hearing some of these options. Because a lot of times if you need to interact, it will tell you so. It'll say to begin interacting with the contents of this scroll area, press control, option, shift, down arrow, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing you can do for our more advanced users um, is you can adjust the time 
Uh, That's what I was just about to say. That's what I do. I don't turn them off, but I do adjust the time. So if I'm on an element or an area for more than, I think it's seven seconds, voiceover knows that I want to know what that hint is. Then it'll speak. But if I keep on moving on, then it won't talk it. So I don't turn them off, but I do adjust the time that it does say that hint. But that is true. I mean, and, and so, if, you know, if you're comfortable with your voiceover utility settings, you can go in there and you can adjust the um, the time, the, you know, before the hints and, and that sort of thing. I forget where that's located, Cliff, and under voiceover utility. I think it's under verbosity. verbosity. It's actually a, a category itself. I think it's the fifth one. It'll be um, speech, voices, or not voices, braille, text, something else, and then hints. Okay. Text. Okay. That's what it is, text. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Thank you. So that's that's helpful. If you want to do that, but leave them enabled. And then here are some key words that, it, you know, if you hear these words, it probably means it probably means you're going to need to interact. So any kind of bar, any kind of bar, toolbar, sidebar, scroll bar, any of those kinds of bars, if you want to work with the contents of those, you have to interact with them. Any kind of group, if you hear the word group, radio group, button group, any of those types of terms you got to interact with it. If you hear the word area, and that can be pretty broad, you might hear content area, scroll area, HTML area, text area, all these kinds of areas and probably a bunch that I don't even know about or I'm forgetting. You want to interact with an area in order to be able to work with it. And so um, there's, there's probably other uh, keywords that I'm forgetting because I don't I use the iPad I don't use the Mac every day but um, Cliff are there any other ones that just stand out to you that that word as soon as you hear it you know you need to interact with it the only one that I can think of that you might have missed is tables other than that oh, I oh, think you yeah got that's a big one yeah that's a real big one absolutely the tables yes yep thank you I did yeah I did miss that one uh, so those are some you know helpful terms but what we're going to do now is Cliff and I are going to demonstrate this for you and uh, we'll go to uh, a couple of places. Where do you want to go first? The Finder? So as most of you know, probably the Finder is, is kind of like your files app. It's what you, uh, you know, you can access different folders and iCloud Drive and other drives on your Mac and so forth. And it's, it's actually what's opened by default when you have the desktop and you just may not realize it. But we're going to have you already gone into a new Finder window. No, I haven't. I'm, you know, okay. um, I, I haven't gone out. The my, my desktop, as you know, stays blank. So right. I'm in well, Finder, but I don't have, too. but I don't have, I don't have a new Finder window open. But it is blank. Okay. So all right. So probably the best way to demonstrate this is to open a new Finder window. I don't know what your default folder is going to be, but iCloud Drive matter. window. iCloud Drive view. Okay. okay. All right. So now, folks, to, it, there's a case where Cliff used the shortcut key, and I would have too. Uh, not all the time do I do things the way that he does because I don't. I'm not as much of a Mac user as he, so I don't know all the shortcut keys that he knows. But that's and one voiceover just reminded us of another one where you know you got to interact, and, and that's list view or list column view. view or column view. Any of those you have to interact as well. But just so you know how we open that Finder window, I'm assuming uh, he pressed Command N. Is that right? That is true, and that's actually the only way you can open a new command uh, Finder window. The only other way to get to it is <laughs> the only other way would be to go up to the menu bar with Control Option M for men, and then go to it. I can't remember now if it's the Finder or the File menu. I think it'd be the File menu, but ultimately it's going to tell you to push Command N anyway. So it is. It's going to say New Finder Window Command N. That's exactly right. It'll give you that because that's a Mac OS now. Uh, that's a Mac OS shortcut. So even if you're not a voiceover user, you can do that one. Uh, these ones with the you know control and option voiceover keys obviously require voiceover to be on. Command N, that's an everybody command. So you can press that. And we now have a finder window. And if we move, we can move through this finder window on the, I'm assuming, the top level. He might be interacted with that scroll area or that list, but I doubt it. So let's press the o left arrow and see where we go. Kind, size, date modified, folders, okay, so folders, I'm, I'm ascending actually, order. I'm actually wrong. Let's let's get that notated down. Cliff, that's going to be Cliff's ringtone, me saying that I'm wrong. All right. <laughs> date modified, size, so kind. So we, we are already in the list. So what we'll Last do right few. now is we'll stop interacting by pressing VO shift up arrow. Out of scroll area. 
Okay. Now we should be at the uppermost level. If we do it again, we should get a, a, a bing sound that indicates we can't go any higher. Yep. Yep. Okay. So that means we don't have to stop interacting anymore. We're at the highest level, sort of the bird's eye view of this finder window. And if he starts moving to the left, we will hear what's in this Vertical window. Vertical splitter. Sidebar. Row 9 of 26. iCloud drive. iCloud. Selected. Now what you heard there is the sidebar, which basically means because I use the new finder window and I have my finder set to open up automatically in iCloud Drive because that's where I use that's what I use the most. And yep. later on in this session I teach you how to set up those finder settings to what folder you want to be open when you do open a new finder window. But this is the sidebar and right now iCloud Drive is highlighted because that's what I have open up automatically. If I interact with the sidebar though, it'll tell you what is all in the sidebar. So let's interact here by going the O shift down arrow. In sidebar, row nine of twenty six. iCloud drive. And as you, selected. And iCloud as you drive, heard I, be quiet. As you heard <laughs> as you heard, iCloud drive is the ninth thing in the sidebar. So I'm gonna I'm gonna VO up arrow so you can see what else can you can find in the sidebar. iCloud expanded downloads arrow down circle. Applications, Recents, Clock, Airdrop, Dropbox, P Cloud Drive, Favorites, Favorites, Expanded. Okay, so now it's the top because we heard that bottom. So let's go back down. P Cloud Drive, Drop, Airdrop, Recent, Applicate, Down, iCloud, Expand, iCloud Drive, Documents, Doc, Desktop, Shared, sh Locations, Google Drive. So basically, this is, I don't even know what you would call this. What is that section of Windows when you're not? in the home folder but you're like in where everything else is at is that i guess that would be their applications folder i guess i don't know so the, the section of the with the locations is actually what they used to call and maybe still do computer you, you can you can quickly jump to that with the shortcut command shift c and that right. gives you like all the drives on your computer but then you notice it had these sections so it had the favorites section up at the top and it said it was expanded and I think you could have pressed VO space to collapse it if you didn't want it. Is that right? Or do you have to do... Uh, I don't know if it's command space. I use the uh, VO... What is that? Um, the backslash. backslash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's... So there's two ways, folks. If you find something that's expanded and you want to collapse it, or you, more importantly, find something that's collapsed and you need to expand it, uh, that's not interacting because that's a that's a Mac OS thing now. You understand that? that the, for the sighted users, too. So if you want to expand it, it's one of the two. It depends on what it is sometimes they're interchangeable but either vo space or if that doesn't work then vo backslash will definitely work control option backslash will expand and collapse these these areas that are uh expandable or collapsible so um that's that is a, a voiceover command to do that um for sighted users you would just click on it or maybe there's a little arrow next to it that you click to expand it okay but it is that that is a, you know something that uh, that anybody can do in, in one way or another. So these are all the different areas in the sidebar. Now, remember, we're interacting with this sidebar, and that's how we would change the location. So if we create, or rather, excuse me, if we open a new finder window and we say, well, it, it brings me to iCloud Drive, that's normally where I want to be, but right now, for some reason, I need to browse to my uh, my connected USB thumb drive, or I need to browse to... Um, you know, the the, the uh, Google Drive or P Cloud or, you know, I'm feeling nostalgic and I have a DVD drive connected and I got to, you know, you have to interact with that sidebar then to, I mean, there's other ways too, but that's beside the point. You But you would interact with that sidebar to see the list of locations. That's what's in this particular sidebar. Some apps will use sidebars for other things. And again, if you're an iPad user, this may make sense because the iPads more and more now are using sidebars that go along the left-hand side of the screen and are expandable and collapsible like this with different areas of, of things. So if, if we select something here, um, I don't know what we're on right now. I don't remember. Locations, expanded, shared, shared for desktop, documents, document. Okay, so he's got something selected. Now, if we, it, there are two different things that we can do here. One is that we can stop interacting with actions the VO. Available. Oh, and, and you notice it also said actions available. Remember, we talked about actions before. That's one of those cases where you would 
potentially want to use that VO command space bar to get the actions, the context menu. But we're not. But you also that. noticed that that hint was spoken because we were. I lingered here for a while, and voiceover right. knew that I wanted to hear it. That's right. Exactly. So there are two things we can do now. If we want to explore the rest of the window, the finder window. Uh, and, and just get out of the sidebar, we can stop interacting with the VO shift up arrow. That will take us out of the sidebar and then we can move around and see what else is in the finder window. The other thing that we can do is if we know that we're on the location we want, we heard documents, if we want to jump directly back to that other area, the, the list view scroller, because remember, if we were to do this with the most basic of, of ways, we'd have to stop interacting with the sidebar. Then we'd have to VO right, I think probably twice to get to the list view scroll area, which actually contains the contents of the selected location, in this case, the documents folder. And then we'd have to interact again. Now that's not a big deal, but it's several steps and there is a quicker way. And it's known as the voiceover jump command. If you right now, press the VO or control option and the letter J, it's going to immediately jump you from this sidebar to the scroll area. And that is a very convenient command where you find more than one area that can be interacted with. Like it's, um, it's great in, well, I'm assuming it still works. I, you know, theoretically could be saying something wrong here and Cliff will have to lambast me for that, but it, it typically works great Private in relay is active. You're it typically works great in mail because you can jump from the message list right to the body of a message. I think you can do that in the messages app also, right? Cliff, with conversations, jump to the actual conversation itself then, right? Yes, you can. The only problem, I mean, some people think that you can jump backwards and it, it doesn't work. With it. It, just, it only jumps forward. So There's no we, there's no VO shift, J. You can't right. do the backwards. Search. Sort of. Okay. In gotcha. view, name. And see, when I did it, it actually automatically had me interact because I was already interacted with the sidebar. So that's what that's it right. did. It, it automatically interacted me into the list view. So that's Stop the advantage shoulder. of that. Not yep, exactly. It just saves you a few steps, you know. And and just one other comment that I, I would make here, uh, and then Cliff, whatever else you want to demonstrate, you know, we'll, we'll definitely do. But one other comment that I, or I'll ask it this way, uh, because we get, you know, we get this question, you know, you have yours set up as list view right now. And Cliff, is this like one of those other screen readers where list view is the only thing that I can use? Like, do I have to switch mine? I better go right now to my Mac and switch everything to list view, right? No, no. You have no. choices. We yep. have column yep. view, which is the other popular view with um, voiceover users. There's also icon view and gallery view, which is more for the side of things because of the what? way that it lays it out. Some people... That's right. Some people do use icon view and have success with it, but later on in this session, John actually demonstrates the difference between how to navigate list view and column view. So, right, so that's coming up, but they're all they all work with voiceover though. There's right, no right or wrong. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. can switch those by doing command one through four, and voiceover will speak them. So I guess I'll go ahead and as icons checked. Icons is one. List view. Relative list is five. List is two. List one item selected. I think that's supposed Folder. to be uh icon because it didn't say it. As gallery checked. And yep, so icon is three and gallery is four. Last view. And so that that gives you an idea. We interacted, you know, if you stopped interacting, there's more things you could interact with. There's a toolbar in this uh finder window also, and I don't even remember what all is in the toolbar. Uh but that's another area near the top of the screen uh that we can interact the toolbar. with. Eight items back forward. Back forward as list, list view, group, share, add tags, action, Dropbox, search, search. So okay. basically, it just gave you some options to share and, you know, some, you know, quick settings that it thinks that you may want to do while you're in, you know, the sidebar area. I mean, like if you were in a direct folder like applications iCloud Drive or maybe even your home folder which is the folder on your main desktop where all your music movies TV shows and I downloads and if you don't have your your documents in iCloud which I do they'll also be housed there but it will always give you recommendations in that toolbar right. on things that things you want to do 
And to be clear, again, there are other ways of doing most of those things. But if you get into a new app and you don't know what those shortcuts are, or you know, you're reading a, a user guide that was written for the cited user and it says, you know, click the plus sign in the toolbar. Well, you don't have to wait and you don't have to say to somebody, you know, hey, cited family member or friend or whatever, I have no idea what they're talking about, plus sign in the toolbar. All you have to do is find the toolbar, interact with it, and logically figure out what is probably a plus sign, which is usually going to be add or new or create new or, you know, something like that. You can use the toolbar the same as your cited counterparts. It's not typically the only way. And many voiceover users will probably find other ways, quite honestly, that they like better because there's less moving around if they can do it with a shortcut key. But you know what? Why not learn the basics so that you can navigate in any app or website that you so desire? desktop and to close that out you just push um what did i push oh i went out command w now that's usually going to close the current window so if you're in when uh, uh mail or pages messages something like that and you do command w it's only going to close the window and you'll hear um, whatever app you're in has no windows. If you right. want to completely close the app, you want to use command Q as in quit. So, yes. yep. And those are important because they're going to save a lot of time. Again, there, if we're very technical about it, we could have, you could interact with the, um, well, actually, I don't even think you have to interact. It's at the top level at the very, very leftmost, uh, that you can yeah, go. Yeah, where it says close. There yep. is a close, but you can do it that way and then go up to the application menu, the OM, and, you know, get the quit button. But these are so much easier. Command W to close the window. Command Q to quit the app. All right, we can jump into Safari. I actually haven't even taught nothing with Safari, so this would be a little teaser, I guess, for lack of a better term. Right, um, and I think really just another example for us to show interacting again just one more time here. Yeah. Exactly. Now, most people keep theirs on their, their, des their, their dock, actually. My dock is actually pretty empty because I have a commander for pretty much anything that I want to open. The only things that I do have on my dock, well, let's go see. Cock. I can't even remember, so I can't tell you. <laughs> so, of course, <laughs> Finder is there. Photos. Photos, which is an app that I use often enough to have it on the dock, but I don't open I don't open it enough to have a commander for it. Feedback assistant. Feedback assistance. I'm part of the beta program, so I go in there and submit feedback, or as I call it, that job application when you want to tell them something's wrong. Separator. And then it's you hear it say separator, and I'm if I'm if if I miss my guess or don't miss my guess, I should say, the next one should be the trash. Trash. There it is. Trash. And that's the last one. So on my dock is very empty. But normally, when you first set up your Mac, you'll have it just about everything that they think you're gonna use on your your dock. Or your yeah your doc, mail, Safari, photos, uh, messages, contacts, calendars, you name it is probably gonna be there. I mean they put just about everything on there. Pages, Keynote. Um, I removed all that, and I'll teach you later on down the line how to you know reorganize your doc. But this ain't that session. I just wanted to come in here and show you that my doc is pretty much empty because like I said I have commanders for everything. So my commander is actually a default commander that um was set up with the Mac when it shipped and you'll have a few Safari is com option left right option s you can use the left option most people use the right I'm, I'm assuming that's because I think most people are right-handed which we are um, another teaser option T you can get the time option M you can get mail open um, and I think those are the only default ones I was about to give you another one but that's one that I set up but it was option C for con for uh, messages but I set that one up so T, T for time N for mail S for Safari so let's do now, S for I'm Safari sure that you, I'm sure that you've probably already um, discussed this but just in case somebody forgets or they're joining late or you know what have you if I'm sitting at my Mac right now just out of the box and I try uh, right option S and it doesn't do this or right option T uh, it's just because I haven't enabled a setting correct right which would be um, the voiceover commander and if I'm not mistaken command or VO keys shift K keyboard commander off desk. so I just turned it off but if you want to turn it back on it's a toggle you do VO shift keyboard commander on 
and the letter K. So yes, you, you and if you want to turn it on the long way, as Matt has discussed, you can go to the voiceover utilities menu and go all the way down to commanders and just That's check right. the box that says turn keyboard commander on. Now be careful when you go in there because there's other commanders. There's the numpad commander. There's what else is there? There's one more, isn't there? Well, that the trackpad that we're going to discuss. The trackpad later. commander. That's yeah. And then, you know, just to give people one other thing here, when if you want to see, because we've said that, you know, by default, you get a new Mac, and it pretty much has all the popular apps on the dock, which, of course, you know, VOD to get to the dock. But what if you want to see all your apps? And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. My favorite is the launch pad, and that's my favorite because I am an iPhone and iPad guy more than anything. So I like to use things that sort of our call outs to the iPhone and the iPad and the launch pad is absolutely that by default you can get that launch pad from the dock if you open the dock it's probably the second or third item on the dock uh, I think I don't know actually I can tell you in a couple days but I think the the Macs that don't have touch bars I think you can press maybe the F4 key to bring up the launch pad also uh, but it is on the dock and when you do that it actually opens up you'll hear this little uh, sound is a <laughs> sound and it, it fills the screen with a full screen like a home screen like your iPhone or iPad. A green yeah, I can't tell you because I disabled mine because I hate the launch pad. But I think you're right. I think it's I think it is F4 and yeah. remember also as long as your your function keys or your top row is um, the check boxes checks that use as standard function keys because if that is not checked oh, that command with the F4 will not work. Yeah, then you'd have to add the function key, I think, or something. And right. then the, the other way, if you don't want to use the launch pad, is you can actually open a finder window with your applications folder. We saw that in the sidebar, and again, it's got a shortcut key, and that is Command-Shift-A, which will bring you up to all of your applications. So however you need to get to Safari here, if you're following along with us, we're going to open Safari. Safari, 100%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90 loaded. Amazon.com. Don't judge me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Amazon is my home page because I do. Expecting a, a review of whatever it is that you bought there, Cliff. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do spend a lot of time on Amazon. I do, but um, uh, that Amazon's not a good site to test out um where you would have to interact because their site is pretty clean as a voiceover user. Wouldn't you agree, Matt? Yeah, I mean, of course, mostly I use the app because I'm using iPad and iPhone, but right. the, the website has always been fine also, yeah. Right, so give me a web page that you think that we have to interact through times. Oh, oh my, I, I got to think about that now. Put me on the spot here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about, what about like, uh, I mean, you know, we don't, we certainly don't want to get, uh, political here, but what, you know, what about like a news site or like a, we could use a tech news site, that way we avoid politics altogether but you know maybe maybe some kind of a, a, a tech blog or something that has you know multiple sections i mean even if we don't find a site that we can interact with we still can find things in safari that need to be interacted with because right what happens in safari is that and i think by default because um, i think actually so if i search for something yes. search amazon search tech. now what i did is i hit the letter f because i use single key navigation and quick nav on when I'm on the website it's just faster and more sufficient I mean if you want to continue to use the caps lock key or voiceover keys on the website that's up to you I'm I'm a little older I'm lazy so when it comes to Safari I turn on the single letter navigation and to do that you hit voiceover and the letter Q will turn it on and it's a toggle so you hit the voiceover letter Q and turn it off now I actually have to turn it off here because quick nav and um, entering text does or not quick nav but um, single key letter navigation and entering text do not work together so I actually you do have to turn it off you bring up a good point though Cliff when you said quick nav do you still have to have quick nav on first before you enable single key navigation right so I'm gonna so, have to so I'm gonna have to turn off quick nav and single key letter navigation in order to type my search so you press to, off. to turn the quick nav off it's the left and right arrows together to turn it on or off and then if you want to use that single key, you turn it on and then you do VOQ to turn on single key navigation. Exactly. Arrow key quick nip off. So there's supposed to be some new iPads coming out. So let's see if we, we got some discounted iPads. So let's just search for iPad. Space. Latest generation. Space. 
Ten, 0%, 100%, 88% loaded. Now that page has loaded. I don't know if you heard that little ding there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna turn quick nav back on. Arrow key quick nav on. And I'm gonna turn single letter navigation on. Single key quick nav on. And I'm gonna hit the letter H to get to the top of my results. Two items. One sixteen of one hundred ninety six results for iPad latest generation. Sponsored ad from KATYBE tablet. Now you can you can hit the letter H again to get to your first tablet because right there that's just an advertisement. Apple iPad 10th generation with a 14 Bionic chip, 10.9 inch liquid retina display, 256 gigabytes, Wi-Fi 6, 12 MP front, 12 MP back camera, Touch ID, all day battery life, silver. Well, with that advertisement, I just better buy one, huh? I mean, he no, just threw it all out there, didn't he? <laughs> 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 My goodness. You don't get a much better description than that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Options. Two sizes. 4.8 out of 5. 4.8 out of end of. 4.10101. 10,100. End of. 10,2K plus bought in past month. Five hundred fifty-nine dollars and zero zero cents list. So you see the information that VoiceOver is giving you there. It said there's been over ten thousand sold and over two thousand sold in the last month. That's phenomenal. People must really be jumping on, you know, catching on to the tablet world. Now yeah, the reason yeah. I searched for something is because I thought it was going to give me a table here to interact with. But like I said, Amazon has really cleaned up their site for screen readers. As a matter of fact. I think the second or third link on their homepage says contact accessibility click here or call and it gives you a number so I mean they I, I think they probably take accessibility just as serious as Apple does it seems like they've done a really thorough job with it that's for sure um, you notice that uh, trainer cliff was using H to move by heading and you could use the shift H to, to go to previous headings now what if you don't have quick nav and single key navigation turned on you can do it by doing VO command and then the, the letter H or shift H. So you're pressing VO command H to go to the next heading, VO command shift H to go to the previous heading. But here's what I'd like to point out, though. By default on the Mac, when you open Safari, it automatically takes you to and interacts you with, if, if I could use that as a, a, a verb that way, uh, it interacts you with the web page area itself known as the html content area so you're actually seeing the website and that i believe is just a way of apple being helpful because when you open safari you probably want to see the website right away but what you actually will find is that there are other areas of safari most of us probably don't need to use them because they're shortcut keys for just about everything if we want to open February 21st, 12, 16 a.m. <laughs> if we want to open... Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's okay. Um, if, we wanna, uh, if we want to open a, a new website, you know, we command L or whatever. So a lot of us don't see this, but there are other areas of Safari. So if Cliff were to stop interacting right now... Out of Amazon.com, iPad latest generation, vertical now, splitter. If he goes to the left, yep, VL left arrow. Toolbar. There's a toolbar, and inside that toolbar are going to be like your back and forward buttons, which all have shortcut keys. But it's just the point that there are other areas besides just the website. So if he moves back to the right two times. Vertical splitter, Amazon.com, iPad latest generation. And, and, let's, and, and let's do the hint. Uh, have it tell yeah, us what this hint is. You are currently on web content. To enter the web area, press control, option, shift, down arrow. Get now I now I don't that. have the like I said I had the hints delayed so it would have read that eventually but if you want to get the hint right away you do V O shift and the letter N is in Nancy and I think you can what is isn't there one with V O uh, shift H also this item yes, has that, no help tag okay yeah, yep that's the help tag. help tag also right okay right. let's go back to the toolbar though and show them what's in there because like yeah. you said there are shortcuts but toolbar. let's see what's there full screen minimize close. Now there, see, there's that close button that Matt was talking about. If I hit that, it will close the web page, but it will not close Safari. Minimize, right. full screen, toolbar, in toolbar, show sidebar, tab group picker. Tab group picker. Go back. You can go back. Go forward. Go forward. Add page to reading list. I don't necessarily use that, but some people love that. So basically, that's a reading list that you can access on at any time I mean I think it's a shortcut in your um, page to reading list yeah in, in your favorites um, section secure site certificate secure site certificate which means that it that is Amazon is secure that's what that's telling you 
Right. HTTPS colon slash slash www.amazon.com slash s question k equals ipad plus latest. So that th right there, it brought me to what is that called, Matt, where you search for a web where the link is at? Is that the yeah, address that, that's bar? The address bar where you can either do a, a, a search or, or a web URL. Yep. And the, the shortcut for that is, I think Matt said it already, is Command L. And I should have told you what the back and forward commands are, which is Command left bracket to go back and Command right bracket to go forward. Reload right. this page. And you can reload the page, and to do that on the fly is Command R. Collection. And this is the collection of, I think this is where people, with stuff that people have shared with you, and this is where this is housed at. Downloads. Downloads. You can get to your download folder directly. And in let, the let me just say that you notice if, if that collection, if he wanted to see what's in it, perfect example, he'd have to interact with it. Reload this page. Let's go and see. HTTPS. Could I have been in a while. Reload this collection. You interact. In collection. F frequently visited. Shared with you. Privacy report. Okay, so there's different things in here that you can um, the old space bar on. Series suggestions. Series suggestions. Reading list. Reading list. See, there's your reading list. So if I added something to my reading list, it's right here in the toolbar. I just have to drill down to into that second hotel room and get to it. iCloud yep. tabs. iCloud tabs. iCloud tabs. Select iCloud device. Voice set voice setting voice settings. Okay, so yeah. Set, out of collect out of tool. See now you see I had to I had to stop interacting three times actually to get out to get back to the main thing. So I'll go back over to the right, which is the Amazon page. Amazon dot or int or out of one free delivery my free delivery. And of course I can get this iPad delivered if they want me to spend five hundred bucks on it. So let me <laughs> what website is this here? Zero percent. Apple news, rumors, reviews, prices and deals. Apple Insider page has Apple Insider. This is a good one to go to because when you click on an article, they, they actually have articles here. You can actually interact with the article, but then it, it'll say more information. So let's see what we got. In, uh, besides, I haven't read no Apple news today. So top story. What's the top story today? Rumors score face with rolling eyes. Unlikely after years of research, an Apple smart ring may be imminent. Oh, give me a break. Are you guys serious? <laughs> <laughs> An <laughs> Apple ring? Did you hear about that? I saw that earlier today. <laughs> I saw that. Oh my goodness! Featured stories: Apple Vision Pro follow-up could be 18 months away. All right, so the follow-up for the, the Vision Pro is closer than some people thought it would be. So let me see what's here. I, I think I can interact here. In Apple Vision Pro follow-up could be 18 months away. So I interacted, and I'm going to view right arrow. Apple Vision Pro follow-up. Apple Vision. Okay, follow -up so could be 18 it's just away. a title of scenes. Out of and our horizontal separate article. Apple Music Beta Trials new feature for importing Spotify playlists. Apple, why are y'all doing that? And of all <laughs> <laughs> horizontal separate article. So, but yeah, basically, if I wanted to read one of these articles, blowout deal. 16-inch MacBook Pro with one terabyte SSD gets $850 price drop. I bet that might, that must mean a new Mac Studio Pro or Mac Studio is coming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna VO space bra on this uh this article. It's gonna look hundred percent in limited stock. Grab the 16. And I have the M1. I have the stu uh, the Mac Studio uh, Ultra. So I mean, you didn't even hear a progress bar. He just had 100 percent because it loaded the um the web page. Article. And there's the article. Blowout deal. Now, if I actually wanted to skip all this, I know this is not something we probably planned, but ho, oh, whatever. But if, if I wanted to skip over all these, because there's a bunch of pictures here, probably some sub-links and some advertisement. If I want to skip that, I'm just going to hit Command-Shift-R, and it's going to give me the reading view. And it's going to be nothing but the article, so let's see what it says. Article, 100%, blowout deal, 16-inch MacBook Pro with one article. See, I'm at the very top of the page, and it says article, which means there's nothing on this page except that article. Blowout deal. And because VoiceOver loaded it, or because uh, my Mac loaded it so fast, you didn't even it, it didn't it didn't even get a chance to say um, uh, showing you reader view, because that's what it normally would say. But because the page loaded so fast, that that's why all you heard was 100%. So if I hit it again, hide reader. It said hide reader. So before it said show reader. This time it actually said hide reader. So those are a couple of things that you can keep in mind when coming on to Safari. Like I said, I hadn't planned on teaching Safari. This is just a little teaser. But we just wanted to show you when it's necessary to interact whenever you hear a scroll area. Vertical splitter, vertical scroll bar, toolbar. Uh, there may be some websites that you have to, you know, interact with the vertical scroll area or just a scroll area because it's article and text in that article. So, you got anything else, Matt?
Um, I, I think that's it. I think that's probably uh, uh, giving them a, a lot to play with and a lot to think about. Later on, my buddy John Panarese is going to stop by and give you a little snippet of the difference between column view and list view. Right now, I want to take you through some settings. First, we're going to talk about the settings of the Finder. The Finder actually do does have its own settings. To get to your settings, you do Command, Comma. Finder settings, window, uncheck, shuttle, file, name, extensions, checkbox. All right, let's go to the toolbar and see what's in there. Toolbar. Interact. Theo, oh, I'm sorry. Let me slow down the right. Remember to do that. Theo command and the shift key. Hit the left or right arrow to get to your category. Volume 70%. We're at the volume. Real table, English, language, English, voice, Alex, rate 50%. All right, let's slow down. 45%, 40%. Toolbar. All right. Desktop, desk, desktop, desktop. So, finder settings, toolbar. Interact with the toolbar. Theo shift down arrow. In toolbar, sidebar, tax, general. So we have general, tax. Tags, sidebar, sidebar, advanced, advanced, advanced. So let's go check out general. General, general selected. Out of toolbox, show these items on the desktop. Show these items on the desktop. Unchecked hard disks checkbox. Hard disks. I'm assuming that's like a DVD drive or something like that. Unchecked external disks checkbox. External disks. I'm assuming that's USB drives. You know, network attached storage devices that are plugged in via USB, whatever. Checked CDs, DVDs, and iPods. Checkbox. Well, that's pretty self explanatory. Unchecked connected servers. Checkbox. Connected servers. I don't want to see those. New Finder Windows show. Because all that shows, all that shows in on your desktop. And number one, I don't even use my desktop. My desktop is empty. Now, this next section is new finder shows that means when you hit command in to open a new finder window mine is going to show iCloud drive new I, finder windows show iCloud drive but let's see what our choices are menu cliffs mac studio i can have my computer section show macintosh hd my macintosh hd itself cliff miller's room. My, that would be my home folder where my documents music pictures and all that are housed desktop my desktop which i do not use documents Documents you can have it open directly into your documents folder. Check mark iCloud Drive. iCloud Drive, which is where mine goes. Recents. Or recents. Other ellipses. You can select other, but and I guess open up a different section, like if you had a specific folder you wanted to go to, but iCloud Drive does me just fine. iCloud Drive. Checked open folders in tabs instead of new windows. Checkbox. I've never understood what that meant, so I'm not even going to try to explain it to you. Checked. Open folder. All right, let's go back to the toolbar. The toolbar. In tool general. Tags. Tags. I'm not even going to go into that one because I don't use tags. Um, I'm assuming it's the tags that you want it to be displayed in certain areas, but I don't use it, so we're not even going to go into that. Sidebar. Sidebar, though. This is the stuff that you would see if you go into your sidebar, so let's check that. Sidebar selected. I show these items in the sidebar. Show these items in the sidebar. Scroll area. There's a scroll area, so we're going to interact with it. The O ship down arrow. In checked recents checkbox. Recents checked airdrop. Checkbox. Airdrop. Checked applications. Checkbox. Applications. Checked downloads. Checkbox unchecked on my Mac. Checkbox unchecked movies. Checkbox unchecked music. Checkbox unchecked pictures. Checkbox unchecked Cliff Miller's rich iCloud. Checked iCloud Drive. Checked. Checked. Shared. Checkbox. Checked desktop. Checked. Checked documents. Checked locations. Unchecked Cliff's Mac Studio. Mixed hard disks. Checkbox. Checked external disks. Checkbox. Checked CDs, DVDs, and iOS devices. Checkbox. Checked cloud storage. Checkbox. Checked Bonjour computers. Checkbox. Checked connected servers. Checkbox. Tax. Checked recent tags. Checkbox. Checked recent tags. Out of scroll. Now, as you can see, most of that stuff was unchecked because I know how to get to it via keyboard shortcuts which I'll you know do a little refresher here in a minute but let's go back to the toolbar toolbar in toolbar advanced and the last one is advanced so we'll select that advanced selected out of unchecked show all file name extensions checkbox I don't want to see the file names whenever I go to a to the file so I don't I have that one unchecked checked show warning before changing an extension checkbox so you can say files in different formats it's basically saying here that it's gonna warn you or warn me I should say if I'm going to change the file format. Checked. Show warning before removing from iCloud Drive. Checkbox. That means when you delete something from iCloud Drive, it's going to make sure it gives you a prompt to ask you if you're sure. Checked. Show warning before emptying the trash. Checkbox. Same with the trash. 
checked. Remove items from the trash after 30 days. Checkbox. I don't even know why I have this checked because I empty my trash manually every couple of days. But if you didn't and you forgot to empty your trash after 30 days, it will automatically do it for you. Keep folders on top. I like my folders on top, so that one is checked. Checked in Windows when sorting by name. Checkbox. Unchecked on desktop. Check Unchecked box. on the desktop because, again, my desktop is empty. When performing a search. When performing a search. Search this Mac. When search, performing a search. Search the Mac and what is your other choices? Menu. Search the current folder. Use the previous search scope. Use the previous search scope. And search those are your choices. Mac. When performing a search this Mac. And that is it. Tool so Mac. that's your basically your finder settings. Desktop. Desktop. I push escape to get out of that. So remember when you're navigating your Mac you have um, keyboard commands some are in a, a lot of them are going to be voiceover specific but if you want to know what that keyboard command is for whatever app you're in you're going to do VOM menu bar, in the in the finder it's the go menu go. so I'm going to go there I just push the letter G to do that but in any app when um, you're in pages keynote mail messages anything you just go into that menu by pushing VOM and going over to more, more times than not it's going to say view or navigation or something like that but in this case it's the go menu so let's see what it has to say go back command left bracket and that works anywhere your your back your command back uh, your command left arrow and the next one's going to be command right arrow will take you back and forward pretty much anywhere the next document the next folder the next page in a document web page on safari which we haven't gone over yet so forward command right bracket and closing folder command up arrow closing folder you want to command up arrow reasons command shift f reasons command shift f documents command shift o that means when you do command shift O, it'll drop you right into your documents folder. Desktop command shift D. Desktop. Again, mine is empty. Command shift D. Downloads command option L. If you want to find a download and you haven't changed the location, command option L will take you there. Home command shift H. That's where you house all your document your documents folder unless you have it in an iCloud Drive, pictures, movies, TV shows, whatever. That's your home folder library library doesn't have a shortcut key I would advise staying out of that because you can really mess up a lot of stuff if you go in there and you don't know what you're doing computer command shift C uh, you Windows users would recognize that command shift C is the computer section that's where you're gonna find your network attached stores USB drives thumb drives anything you connected to the externally airdrop command shift R you want to airdrop something for your Mac command shift R network command shift K command shift K your network you know, if you have a network attached storage device or you want to see what other computers are on your network, you can go to that section. iCloud Drive, Command Shift I. Command Shift I, iCloud Drive. So if you have any uh, amount of iCloud storage beyond 5 gigabytes, you go there and you'll be able to see what you got in there. Shared Command Shift S. Shma command Shift S, I've never used that feature, so I will skip that. Applications, Command Shift A. Applications, Command Shift A. Anything that's installed in your Mac will be found in this folder. Utilities command shift U. Um, utilities are, is also found in that applications folder, but if you want to bypass that and just jump right into the utilities folder, just push command shift U. Google Drive. And I have Google Drive yeah, and all the Nexus server ellipsis other command stuff, K. but you know, you get the idea. Desktop. Those are your, for lack of a better, lack of a better term, quick start guide or quick start keyboard commands to get you to where you want to go on your Mac is the difference between list view and column view and finder. So they're not considerably different. It's more of a philosophical um, approach to how you want to look at your finder. Um, you know, the thing that's the advantage for list view in my opinion, again, this is all my opinion, but, you know, from training people is that you do see the information about files. Audio books folder, axe.num books folder, digital editions folder, DVS folder, email folder. So right now I'm in my home folder, my home folder, but right now it's expanded some of my folders, which hopefully DVS, will. Digital books folder, axe.numbers, audio books apps folder. Docs folder, Let's see if I can get applications folder, Docs folder, 
Faps folder. January audiobooks folder. March 19th. List view table audible books folder. Daisy and L. So expanding the folder. Military folder. Misc folder. Uh, will drop me into name ascending order button date modified. So button. what I'm doing is I'm VO right arrow name ascending order button group Star Trek folder Star Wars folder. So this is my audiobooks folder which I have categorized into Star Trek misc folder military folder Daisy and L different categories here. And how did you expand your <coughs> the folders? So I used command down arrow. Now the thing that's kind of weird to me and your mileage may vary is if you look at the go you menu, are screen sharing participants come next to your application me, it will tell me that command right bracket and command left bracket will expand or contract that doesn't seem to work consistently up at command up arrow to close and close a folder and command down arrow seems to work a lot more consistently in list view so as I said, I expanded my audiobooks folder. So now I'm in the audiobooks Zoom. folder. Zoom.us has new audible book military fo misc folder, Star Trek folder. So we have all the different categories. And this is a work in progress. I'm, I kind of like here and there start adding things and subdividing my audiobooks, et cetera, et cetera. So this would be, you know, and if I wanted to enclose. At list view, take axe.in audiobooks folder. March so now 19th. I'm back up a level to the. Um, you know, to the main documents, you know, the folders, the subfolders that are in my documents folder. And if I and lit apps folder, docs folder. So now February I'm closed with command up arrow. Apps folder. So now we're in my main audiobooks folder. Axe dot numbers. So, but it still is. Ex this is what's weird because it's still expanding numbers my and close volumes users list one item selected list docs full download dropbox full so now it's finally i finally got it to close all the folders just to go but what it does is it kicks me all the way back to the user home folder you know the user folder list and then i got to go back into john and and i don't know why it's behaving this way because it never did what it would do is you would have the list of folders as i showed you before and then when you expand subfolders, they become expanded. And then you can work your way down all the way to the bottom of that list. And then you'll hear the folders that are, you know, still closed. And this one continual vertical list that you expand and contract with command up arrow and command down arrow. Now, again, the advantage to list view, in my opinion, is that you do get the information by VO right arrowing. So if you're looking for files that are, you know, were added at a certain date, or you're looking for files of a certain kind, and then you can use the view option with Command J to um, users so window. Just gonna do that. Users close show cl you all browse and group by none group by. So we have group by, and I'm just VO right arrowing here. Sort by name. Sort by. So and then you can sort your folders and your files. So I've worked with people who like the way that Windows, for example, does things where, you know, you have all the folders listed on top and then the files that are in that folder, that specific folder, are after the subfolders list. So you can do that by the name, sort the by name and kind. Text size, 12, tech name, sort none, group by, med check mark, name, kind, application, so kind. kind. If you change this to kind, it will then do the folders instead of the um, the files first. So None. I'm just Group hitting, by. I'm gonna hit my list one here. items. So again, you know, I'm gonna do column now, so I'm gonna do command three. Down the Dropbox. It was, didn't say, but it switched to column view. Now columns is a little different. Everything that you see Downloads so, right, box. Now I'm, in, I'm in my uh, my you know my John, which is let's go back. List one item shape John folder. So my folder is home folder is called John. So I left arrow VO left arrow to close my home folder list. Now if I VO right arrow list one item selected applications everything full. that's in this column is all on the same level of the operating system. Docs full downloads. Dropbox. I put it more audible. I put it more log. Games. So folder. I, go back up I, put it, I put it more audible. Dropbox. Folder. Arrowing. Downloads. 
Application Docs Folder. So if I expand Docs with my going VO right arrow. List one item audiobooks. Axe dot numbers. Notebooks. Full digital editions. Full DVs. Full email folder. So these are all the folders, the subfolders that are in my documents folder. This is the same level. So I'm going up and down with the column. DVs, digital edit books, full axe dot numbers, audiobooks. So I'll go folder. back up to audiobooks that I had in list view. I don't have to do command right arrow. I just list do one item selected. Right Daisy NL Military. Misc. Full Star Trek. Star Wars. Warcraft. Warhammer 40k. Folder. Now I can't go any further down. So the difference here is that if I was in list view. I, if I kept going down, it would actually keep going down to the next subfolder, and then I could expand or contract the subfolders by using command up arrow and command down arrow. So, in essence, from a visual standpoint, list view is a vertical list. So, you're basically expanding and contracting that vertical list. Column view is like the traditional Windows tree view. So, you have the branches and the sub branches of the columns that you're expanding and contracting. So it's a philo philosophical difference. Um, it's just that from habit going back almost 20 years now, I learned Finder in column view and I teach it in column view, but I also don't dissuade my clients from, or any user from, you know, from switching over to list view because I will use list view at times. When I'm looking for something specific, if I'm looking for a date added, if I was in my downloads folder and I wanted to see what the date something certain files were downloaded on, if I was like looking for a, uh, for example, an authorization from a state agency, and the person tells me, oh, we sent that to you on, you know, February uh, 9th, I can go look in my downloads folder and check the date that that authorization was actually downloaded to match it. So, you know, there's advantages to using list view over column view, and there's advantages to using column view over list view. That is specifically up to the user to decide. The two views in Finder that I, you know, I personally don't find accessible with VoiceOver is the gallery view and the icon view. Now, icon or image view is what Apple has by default. Some blind users, some who got who gotten used to icon view, will disagree with me and tell me tell you that icon view is usable with VoiceOver. And yeah, is, is it accessible? Yes, but I don't think it's easy to navigate or understand your file and folder structure in the same way as list view and column view. And to me, that is the most important aspect of using Finder. You need to know where your stuff is being kept on your Mac. And if you use list view or column view, I think you, as a blind user, you have a better you know, a better situation as far as, you know, having a visualization in your mind's eye, especially if you've been blind your whole life or you've been blind for several years and you don't have the advantage of having a visual representation of how the finder structure works. So there, there is my, my opinion or my demonstration of finder and the different views. Now, <clears throat> with column view, isn't it different? Isn't there advantages so I've heard, because I don't use column view at all, but I've heard that there's different advantages to copying and pasting into folders with column view. It's, it's, it's easier if to keep track of. So in other words, the basic rule of column view is you want to be on the folder in which you either are pasting or moving an item or if you're going to create a subfolder. So in other words, if I wanted to make another subfolder in my documents folder, I would be on the documents folder and then I'd press command shift N for the you know to start the process of creating the folder and the same thing for moving and pasting it helps you in my opinion keep track of where stuff is um, list view I, you know I don't play enough with it for copying and pasting because I usually switch to list view just to because I'm looking for something specific so I don't really spend when I'm doing file and folder manipulation I'm always in column view but that's what I have found from again you know everybody's opinion is going to differ and you will find blind Mac users who have been doing this as long as me who will disagree with me and that's fine you know when it comes down to as I always say to people the Mac gives you a lot of ways to do things and it's really up to the user to decide what is the best way for them thanks to John for that 
great demonstration. Now I'm going to go into the voiceover utilities. You can get there a few different ways. Uh, the most common way would be to push Command Shift U, hit the letter V, and the L space bar on voiceover utilities. But most of you know me by now. I'm lazy. I have a commander, so let's use it. Voiceover utility. Voiceover utility window. Utility categories. When you first open it up, it has the general section, and I'm gonna touch on my, uh, some of these, but I'm not gonna go into all of them. The general. Speak the following greeting after login. So you can have voiceover say something to you when you first log in. And mine says, "Hello, Glifton Senior. Content says, "Hello, my name." Unchecked. Display welcome dialog when voiceover starts. Checkbox. Now I'm assuming that puts a welcome something up on the screen. I don't need that for two reasons. One, I don't have a screen, and two, I'm totally blind. So even if I did, I wouldn't be able to see it. Keys to use as the voiceover modifier. Keys to use the voiceover modifier. You can have the voiceover keys, command or control and option, or the caps lock keys for you Windows users and JAWS. But I use the voiceover keys. Now both of them are checked. Control option or caps lock keys to use as the voiceover modifier. It's that way by default, but you know you can use either one. Portable preferences off image. I don't use portable preferences. That's when you can export your preferences and go use them on somebody else's Mac. Portable setup. Portable preferences. Unchecked. Allow voiceover to be controlled with Apple Script. Checkbox. Yeah, so if you want a script like the time and date read when you push Option T or somebody has a custom script for you that they wrote or you know how to write, this box needs to be checked. So that's the last one. So let's go back over to the table. Search, search text, voiceover, utility categories, and utility, verbosity. Verbosity, this is pretty self explanatory. If you want check boxes, buttons, tables, anything to be read out at a certain point, you can select medium, high, low, and have it all be on default. So that's you know something you can play with. Speech. Speech. Let's go in here. Out of voices. Selected tab. One of two. You got voices. Pronunciation. Tab. And you got pronunciation. Pronunciation. I've never messed with. So I, we won't even go to there. Unchecked mute speech checkbox. Obviously, you're a voiceover user, so you don't want to mute speech. Customize language list. You can customize your language list. Mine is English by default. Add language. You can add a language. Remove selected languages. You can remove them. Help. Help. And that's it. Remove so customize language list. So we're gonna go into this customized language list. English. It's on English. Voice Alex. And it has voice Alex. Rate forty rate. 39 and you can join that voice so Alex. but if you want to change or add voices you're gonna deal space bar on this what's a drop down or a pop-up it didn't say it because I have mine set to low but I'm gonna deal space bar menu check and I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom where it says manage voices ellipsis manage voices In English so English vertical is my default split. language go past the vertical splitter voices and we got voices here in voices English. You you're gonna interact with the table, and you can scroll down through their their list of voices. Agnes, one English. U S. Alex, Alex, using nine one one point seven megabytes. Play English. U S. Allison, Allison, nine point nine megabytes. Play Allison. Enhanced English. U S. Ava, Ava, ten point four megabytes. Play iCloud. Ava, enhanced two hundred forty point seven megabytes. Play iCloud download. Okay, so it tells you how much space it'll take up, and then it'll tell you download. If it was already download, it it would say trash. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna interact. In Ava, enhanced 240.7 megabytes. Play iCloud download. So 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 take up 247 megabytes, which is fine. I have a terabyte. Ava, enhanced. So iCloud download. There it is. You find the space bar on this, and but stop. It's downloading. Cancel because there's the cancel button voices and then you while that's downloading you can explore other voices in voice English US Alex of course it took Alex, me back to the top English US eloquence so we're at eloquence <laughs> these all remind me of the you know, I used to be a Windows user so these all remind me of the voices the real speak not the real speak but the eloquence voices that Jaws had Eddie play info flow play info 
Grandma, play. In Grandpa, play. Read, play. In Rocco, play. In Sandy, play. Shelly, play. In English, U.S. Evelyn. All right, so now we're back to the regular, the voiceover voices, not the eloquent ones. Evelyn, 6.2 megabytes. Play. iCloud download. He's telling me that iCloud download. I don't want that voice though, so. Evelyn, enhanced. 257.6 megabytes. Play. iCloud download. <clears throat> okay, so this is not downloaded. And again, to download this voice, I'm gonna interact. In Evelyn and Evelyn enhanced. It's telling me what the name of the voice is. iCloud download. It tells me the iCloud download, which is a button, so I'm gonna do space bar. Stop. And she's telling me to stop because it's downloading. Cancel. I can cancel it. Voices. But I'm gonna not do that. Read, play, in English, US, Kathy. So you get the idea. Vertical split languages. Once you come into manage your uh languages, let me make sure I'm saying this right. So now that I'm done customizing my voice list, okay. I'm gonna go over to the OK button, press VO Activities. space bar. So mute speech checkbox. Of course, you don't want to mute speech. Customize language list. You want to go into customize language list. Voice Alex. Alex is your voice, or maybe not. You would VO space bar there. Menu. Go all the way to the bottom. Manage voices ellipsis. Manage voices. In English. English is my language. Vertical splitter. And then I will pass the vertical splitter. Voices. And interact with the voices there. When you get to the voice you want, you interact once again. You know, drill down uh, into the second section of the scroll area, and you go over to iCloud Download, which is a button, and you press that, and it'll download that voice for you. So, we're all done in here. Okay. Activities. So we're gonna go back Contract. over Mute. to the table over here. Search, search, voice over utility categories. Ralph in utility category navigation. Navigation is basically your mouse pointer. How you want voiceover to react to certain elements and things like that. I've never messed with it because it works fine for me. If you're a voice, if you're a par, um, a high power show or have some site and you want to customize some stuff, have at it. Go for it. I can't give you any recommendations because I don't use it. Web. Web, we haven't even gone over Safari yet, but basically you can reorganize the things that are on your rotor um, in this section of the voiceover utilities. Sound. Sound, this is where you can customize where your sound comes out. You know, if you want voiceover coming out the headset and your movie coming out the speaker, or maybe you want voiceover coming out the speaker or in your uh, movie coming out the headset, this is where you go in here and customize that. Visuals. Visuals, obviously, I'm blind, so I don't need to mess with visuals, so I'm not even going to go there. Commanders. Commanders. Everybody knows that I like commanders. I'm the commander king, I guess you would say, because I create a commander for just about anything. So you would basically go in here, select the key combination you want to use, which would be the right op option key and any letter, and you can even use shift and uh, numbers. You pick the app you want it to open or the action you want it to perform, and then click save. Um, if that's you know if you have trouble with that maybe I'll go over it in a live session but here I'm not gonna do it because there's documentation on it and there's also you know it's if, if you go in here and just listen to the prompts it'll give you what you need to set that commander up Brill. I don't have a brother display connected I do own the mantis and it works great with the Mac puts everything that voiceover would say on my mantis screen because when I'm using a browser display I turn voice off activities activities you can have voiceover do a number of things you can have them open up a, or use a different voice with, a, with with pages and have them have a different voice with keynote I have my set for when I open up Savari quick nav comes on and single key letter, letter navigation is automatically started so I mean you can play around with these activities and do it a, a, a lots of different things Voice over recognition. Voice over recognition. I have not used it on the Mac. I can't say how accurate it is. I already it is on, but I I haven't had an instance where I've had to use it. Voice over recognition. And that is your last category in the voice over utilities. Thank you for joining this session of More with the Mac 2024. Thanks for joining today's session. Didn't get your question answered? Want a free consultation or some paid one-on-one -on -one training? 
email us at support at ttjtech.biz or support at stirringup.com. And remember, stir is spelled with a U. That's S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P dot com. Or check out our websites for additional free resources. That's ttjdeck.biz or stirringup.com. I'm Trainer Cliff. Thanks for joining us. God bless. See you next time.